live from the University of Texas at Austin. The Liberal Arts Development Studio and the Department of Computer Science presents Android Programming. And now, here is your professor, Dr. Emmett Witchell. Great. So one of the things we're going to do to start off is just jump right in, uh, open up a project, and start programming to actually see what we're going to be doing this whole semester over and over again, hopefully enough to the point where it becomes comfortable and familiar, uh, if even a little repetitive. So let's go to the uh, display here where I've got my Android Studio open, and I'm just going to go to a new project. And Android Studio has a bunch of built-in templates for us to use. We're going to spend a lot of our times with the basic activity, um, but over the course of the semester, we'll actually touch a whole bunch of these. Uh, certainly, fragments and view models are going to be coming up. Um, so, you know, lots of, lots of exciting things. But we'll start with the basic activity, because that's uh, always a nice place to start. <clears throat> it gives us just a little bit of code. Um, I'm going to start out with uh, a name, I don't know, delete me, so that I remember to delete this later. This package name is just the name of our application. Um, I like to, let's see, we'll, we'll call it edu for, uh, you know, if we were a company, this would be a reverse domain name, but we'll say edu at uh, University of Texas Android Programming uh, dot delete me. And then you're going to want some local storage for yourself, for your course projects, for your homeworks, for your flipped classrooms. So have that somewhere. And uh, that's where you're going to save your, your project. We're going to be working in Kotlin exclusively this semester. So that's a, that's a really good thing. So we don't need to, to, to bother with Java. Uh, as far as our API level, we're going to stick with 27. Uh, it's a very, you know, sort of powerful recent API level, but it's not cutting edge. So hopefully it should work with most of your phones. If you actually have Android phones, that's perfectly fine. If you don't have phones, that's also okay. We're going to run lots of stuff in the emulator. Um, so yeah, it says your app will, will run on approximately 1.1 devices, 1.1% of devices, because a lot, globally, uh, a lot of Android uh, devices don't support API 27 yet. That's, that's okay. Uh, we don't care about instant apps, and we do care a lot about Android X. We're going to be using Android X uh, heavily during this uh, uh, course, and that's a good thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a really nice set of libraries. Okay, so we hit finish. Our um, Android Studio is, is thinking and doing stuff for us, and you're going to you're see down here in this region, there's a bunch of build information. So the Android Studio generates a bunch of code for us, then it builds that code into an executable that we can load onto our either real device or uh, emulated device and run. And in fact, let's do that uh, right away without even looking at the code. Up here, there's a little run icon. We hit that. <coughs> And then it's going to pop up our emulated phone, which we have here, which has some, some stuff in the background that I'll, I'll get to in a minute. But if you take a look down here, you see that it's running tasks. And this running tasks message means that it's building, it's doing a, a fair amount of actual complex computation in order to make a package that you can install on the phone. And then here it is, our app in all its glory. Uh, it has the name of the app, which is Delmi. It actually has this um, menu uh, that says settings and does nothing. In here it says hello world. That's nice. And then I think a very unfortunate choice for the uh, blank uh, activity is this floating action button, which is something that Google uh, and their um, UI engineers thought was a good idea. At one point, a couple of years ago, and it doesn't seem to have caught on, and yet uh, this is the template that we have. So we're going to look at a lot of these uh, elements today, really with a focus on how do we lay out our initial application, and how does that layout talk to the code that we're going to be spending most of our time and energy doing. So let's take a quick look what's going on, and you're going to notice a couple of things. First of all, so there are these different regions of the screen. So down here is all the information about our build output. 
and there's going to be some debugging stuff down here. So that's great, but we're not, we're not going to look at that right now. What we are going to focus on is up here, and we have uh, really two main areas. This area, this little project area, which you can um, have or dismiss, I actually like to have it. This gives us a, a view of all of the files that are in our project, and we can click these files, and that changes, oops, let's double click it, and that changes this display. All of the file names also show up here on these tabs. So whatever you're comfortable with, I like to have this thing open, but I don't like to give it a huge amount of, <coughs> excuse me, screen real estate. Okay? Um, and the, yeah, and so the, the two things that we're going to focus on uh, first is main activity, which is the code that we're running, and then also content main, which is the layout. And uh, one thing to just notice, you're pro you probably, you might see this word up here, this is Java. There's a um, directory for your code that uh, the name is Java, and then the code that's in that directory is Kotlin code. So maybe that was a little bit of a mistake on uh, the, the parts of the people who initially designed Android Studio and insisted that this uh, directory be named after the programming language, and then they changed the programming language, and it turned out to be too difficult to change the name. So that's the kind of thing that happens in software. It's sort of like you know the analogy of um, some weird mechanical uh, coupling of an old and a new system that sort of looks ugly, but you know, you need it for legacy reasons. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, at the at the main Kotlin code. And the first thing that I, I hope you notice is that while it looks a little bit different from Java, it shouldn't look completely and totally strange. Uh, in fact, Kotlin is almost like a cleaned up version of Java. I think the thing that syntactically makes it uh, the most difficult for beginners is that for uh, variable names and for parameters, you have the name first, then you have a colon, and then you have the type name. There's also these question marks. Basically, a question mark means that type can be null. That is maybe a little bit funny in the beginning, but it's remarkable how quickly you adjust to that, and it's an incredibly useful feature. But just this, this thing of the, the name comes first and then the, the type name, I don't know. That, that was difficult for me to adjust to. So the, um, the, uh, the other thing that, we're, that you're going to notice is that unlike maybe a lot of programs you've written, there's no main routine where everything starts. There's a series of callbacks. And we'll get into this a little bit more later. Uh, but, but the idea is that the Android system is running. And it responds to a lot of events by calling your code and asking your code what to do. So when somebody, when the user double clicks on, the, on your icon, the Android system finds out about that. It decides to run your program. And when it runs your program, at some point when it's good and ready, it will call this routine, which is on create, which lets you know that it's time for your code to do its initialization. The system has done some initialization, and now it's calling you to, to do initialization that's specific to your logic. So <clears throat> just like uh, a lot of times in object-oriented programming, the first thing we do within a method is we call the super uh, class version of that method. We do that here. Set content view is the call that takes the layout and actually displays it on the screen. And so setting the content view, um, we're going to break it down a little bit as we go through the semester. And there's an operation called inflation. Inflation takes an XML file, which is data, and it's data that describes the layout. And inflating that XML takes that XML, which is a piece of data, turns it into a set of view objects that all point to each other that actually represent the view on the screen in memory. So we're going from the XML, which is just a piece of data that's in a file, to a data structure that's in memory that represents all of the views that are currently on the screen. And this tells the Android runtime system to display these views to the user. So this is what makes the phone look like it's running our app. 
Uh, the action bar is just part of the UI. Um, and then uh, I'm not going to get into this uh, too much here, but this is the floating action button. And look at this. I'm going to get rid of it because I don't like it. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get rid of it from the layout also. Um, yeah, one thing, uh, one thing that you might notice, though, is that um, we just refer to this floating action button here as FAB. And so I'm going to now go down to my layout, and I'm going to take a, a look a little bit at what's going on in the layout. Oh, actually, here's a different layout file. Because this different layout file, uh, you'll notice something in here, and that is there's a name, Android colon ID, and then there's this funny syntax where you have, you know, it equals and it's a string and then it has an at sign and a plus and ID, all that stuff you can sort of learn to ignore, and even this slash, and then this text identifier, FAB. So one of the first things we want to demystify is how do you do layout for a Java, uh, so for an Android application, and how do you do the code for a Java application, and how do those two things know about each other? And the coupling between the two of them is using these text identifiers, which is actually very simple and very powerful, really nice mechanism. And so this is our floating action button, which if we look here uh, at the type, this is from Google, from uh, uh, Google's Android code. Material refers to material layout, which is a series of uh, standards that Google has for UI elements and then a floating action button. And look what happens if we uh, grab all this XML and delete it. <laughs> You'll notice in here the preview of our layout, the floating action button is gone. And the code that controlled that floating action button is gone, and we're happy. And in fact, here's a bunch of code to uh, set up that settings menu, which we didn't need. And so we're going to get rid of that. We're going to go back up here. We're going to run our new modified, sleek, streamlined app. And let's see, is it going to, is it going to pop up or no, we got to, we got to grab it. So this is now our, our sleek stream, streamlined app, app called Delmi. It has hello world in the middle. It has no floating action button. We've done our first uh, example of creating an Android Studio project letting Android Studio fill in a bunch of code for us. We've modified that code. We've modified the layout. And now we've created a new app that can run on our emulated phone. It's a simple example, but it's the, the start of something great.